Hey guys, how are you doing? Um, sad news, Brad is not with me today. I did send in a message, but I guess he didn't get my email or saw the message. So it's just me and you today. So last uh, we built this um, link up above, uh, on that side or that side, I'm not sure which one is going to be. Um, we finished around step nine. Uh, and then I noticed that uh, there was a lot of gluing to do and the glue had to basically dry uh, So I didn't want to do that uh, Live and watch the glue dry or wait for the glue to dry So I actually did those steps So there's a couple steps I did and there's some pieces in here and we'll go through that real quick with the manual But basically this is where I am so far where I left off is we we're about to install these rails and actually do the front tower mount and the rear tower mount. So uh, this is the front and this is the rear. And there's something interesting here with the front servo mount also. If you notice the way I got it mounted, the servo is going to be mounted from the front. And there's a reason I did it this way. There's two different ways you can actually do it. And let's go over there and actually see it. So <clears throat> this is where we left off um, when I was doing the build. Uh, about to put these uh, chassis rails onto the main chassis. So now uh, there's the tower. Oh, I just want to show you. All these little icon means I have to glue this. So basically, you got to glue this onto this piece and wait till it dries. And also, all these screws that you actually drop in here, you have to put some glue so it actually stays there. Uh, into those little pockets. So uh, I did get the contact cement they wanted me to use, but it took way too long to actually dry. So I used a um, I used uh, da, 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 gorilla glue. It's like shugu, but it's gorilla gorilla glue. The reason I like this one better than shugu is simple: is the applicator. It's got a very uh, small mouth, so when I squeeze on it, there's only a little bit that actually comes out. So it makes it much easier to actually do. Um, RC Mass Master, how are you doing? So I, I've actually put all the, the glue and the, these I used the CA, uh, these I actually used the Gorilla, Gorilla Glue to actually put in there. Um, and there again you have to put some glue here on the um, on, on the shock tower to actually hold it in there. <clears throat> and the servo mount can be mounted in the front like this and that's what I've done uh, yes I think this way you might be getting better control but uh, it gives me the option but when I was looking farther up on the manual like page 18 19 I noticed that if ever I were to do maintenance on the horn or do maintenance on the servo itself I basically had to remove the front axle to actually have access to those screws and I just didn't want to do that. So let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb. It's beeping at me a lot. And I don't like that, especially when I'm live. There we go, silent. Do Not Disturb. So <clears throat> I decided not to go with the servo upright. So the servo will not be upright like this. They go with this step. I'd rather have it laid down like that. I can take it off and on um, whenever I want. Uh, this way uh, you have to install it now and that's why they're telling you now if you're going to put it uh, upright you have to install it now because once you start putting those axles on you can't screw that back in so for me I'd rather do it the other way if ever I want to change it I could I might only have to remove these two screws and split the whole thing apart uh, hopefully it will come apart that's what I'm thinking, but for now it's going to stay laid down. <clears throat> and there's another part here that you had to glue this part, the C3 part, had to glue them in here so they wouldn't move. <clears throat> so that's the main reason I did this one here also. Uh, and then I didn't have to do this, but once I always started working, I just said, ah, oh, what the heck, I'm just going to keep going and doing it. So I did it. I started uh, I, I started building it and kept on building it and then I decided uh, it's Friday, uh, it's nice and quiet and uh, 
I decided to uh, go live and actually continue this build because everything is on my desk. Uh, so everything is on my desk and I just like, it's just taunting me. Like continue building me, continue building me. So um, now we're gonna continue the build and I'll show you the next step onto the, the build. Basically you can see the big color difference. Uh, this is kind of a grayish color and this is a black. Uh, we're gonna insert that into here and uh, screw it onto, onto it and continue the build. Let me go back to the to this. So I had actually attached everything, the front, the rear, uh, with all the screws the way they actually mention it. And now the next step is actually finding these two screws, the uh, nice and long screws, which I have here. Let me just grab them real quick. And then I can change the camera view. There's no washers, no nothing. Uh, I won't bother about putting the stickers on it right now. Uh, I'll do these stickers after. Once I take it back out of the box and, and get the sticker going, I'll, I'll put those on. But right now, let's put the transmission in there. So hopefully you can view this a little better than uh, last time. So basically, you insert the transmission in there. It is kind of tricky uh, in a sense to actually put in there because you do have kind of to twist it in there and it actually drops in. Once you've done it um, once or twice, it, it falls in there pretty easy. So it tells me on the picture if I hold it that way, the long screws go on top or go on the front. So let's install those. And I believe, I believe, I believe it's right here here and here. The way they set the screws in here, it's kind of cool because you do, at the beginning, you do build these and while you're building it, you insert some nuts. So what I like about this, it's very strong because you actually have nuts that are actually catching these screws. And to me, that's way stronger than having it that uh, it's actually the um, uh, on plastic so it makes way more sense and why is that one not catching oh there it goes that just wasn't screwed in all the way and you can really feel it tighten it up when that nut actually gets pulled in into that uh, chassis into the gear so now we're going to insert the other two screws in there RC Mass Master that must be nice and early for you to actually see the stream which is good because usually it's like AM when I do streams for you and that's the reason I decided to go do a stream a little earlier uh, is just to catch all these people that actually do not um, have time to do a late or early morning depends on the where you are in the world and because I am screwing into a nut I am not putting bothering putting a Loctite because I am kind of screwing onto plastic and this plastic is is like a, a not a rubber but it's it, it's a it's a nice plastic uh, concerning Tamaya, uh, and to me it's gonna act like a um, a lock nut, a lock washer. So there's no reason to put Loctite on here. And keep in mind when you're putting Loctite where there's plastic, uh, you do have a chance that the Loctite is actually gonna destroy the plastic. Uh, a lot of people do that, uh, and the after a while that Loctite really dis disintegrate. Um, 7 10 p.m. oh cool let me just turn on my my fan here to give me some air and there we go so hopefully that fan is not bothering you guys too much if it is let me know and I can actually change microphone to use my other microphone that actually will not uh, pick up the fan so there we go, battery goes here, basically you pull that, lift that up, and then the battery slides in here. 
and there is other parts that are actually going to go here in the future. So the battery is right in the center, pretty much as low as you can make it. So it's going to make it's going to make it nice. That's what I think. So let's go to the next step. Next step is dry shafts. Now they are telling you to actually use a pair of pliers here to actually split this open and actually install those little uh, um, balls with little spikes. So, but I do have something a little bit that a lot of people don't realize or don't know what it is for, but basically this tool is from a Tamiya, uh, not a Tamiya, a Traxxas kit. So you get this when you first get your Traxxas, but a lot of people don't know what that is. And it's actually to help you rebuild the Traxxas um, shocks, because the Traxxas shocks are actually a ball joint like this. So I have to cut these out. Somewhere I have my pliers. Did I put them away? phone was hiding it. She was hiding under my phone. So I always use flush cutters it's called. Uh, the way these are they're very flush here and the angle is actually on this side and when you put these onto the plastic it actually cuts it really flush. You can use other side cutters for this but then you have to take a knife or whatever and clean the burr that's off of it. So this makes it for a very nice clean and then a very flush clean also. So I always use these. You can find these pretty much anywhere. They're called flush cutters and not side cutters. Um, they cut from the side, but they cut very flush. So I did put one of these together already. And when I put it together, I noticed that... Um, it does have a black pin, it does have a black pin and a white pin. And they do, they are different size. And the first one I actually put, I put the black onto the, um, on the main dry shaft and not on the one that actually goes flush. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. My wife was uh, asking me questions. So basically, I noticed that the holes are a different size a little bit. So the way I noticed is once it was together, I noticed that uh, it was tight. It was tight and I couldn't turn it too much. So I took it apart and I put it back in there. But basically, these are pretty easy to build if you have this tool. They do say to take the plier and actually lift the ear but they do say be careful not to um, not to break it or not to damage it uh, I'm in the waiting room oh you're in the waiting room of your pediatrist cool well I hope you're not bothering anybody with the audio that's for sure
but and I'll go through something with the shocks in a little bit also. Is a phase and out of phase. Um, there's ways to put these together that they actually work better. So, come on. Okay, so basically uh, I noticed that the black part actually goes onto the smallest part. Hey uh, RC Nixter, nice to see you here. So basically you can take this ball and actually put it um, onto into one of the holes. And you just push it into the hole. Come on. Sometimes you have to persuade it to go into the hole. Once it's into the hole like this, you can actually take this tool and actually with the hole you put it in and you push real hard onto it. And then it grabs that and then you just torque down a little bit. It pushes everything down and you can push and the ball just went in there. And there we go. So this is very nice and easy to fix these shocks or to take them apart. So a lot of people don't know that this tool exists and you get those with the Traxxas. So don't throw that away. Uh, keep it. I have uh, three or four of them here and got it from other tools from other people that they threw away. So I do have a couple of spare ones here. So it's that easy. There we go, one done. Now I can do the other one. Dan says he's just chilling out. Everybody else must be uh, busy or sleeping. They actually might be at work. So this is a work day. Uh, me, it was very slow at work. I work from home for a bit. And uh, it's very slow waiting for clients to reply and things like that. So uh, I decided to come here and do a live instead. Uh, instead of sitting there looking at my computer and waiting for an email to come in. So another one just came, went into the other one. And now we're going to insert the last one done both of them are done so when you actually do these one thing you have to worry about is what's called phase in phase and out of phase so when you put these dry shaft together you can't just put them together any which way because you notice here uh, you see through it but here you don't and then you see through it so this is actually out of phase um, the whole dry shaft is not pointing the right way so when you actually put these together just make sure you hold it this way and you just turn it and then you make sure you see you can see both and then you just insert it together and now like you can see I can see through the hole here and I can see through the hole here this is in phase this is very important when you take off your your um, your dry shaft and put them back together or if ever you're working on it and you're putting it back sometime your front wheel turns because this you can actually put them it's just a slot and it, you can insert it pretty much anywhere but always worry about that and because that's going to stop your front wheel from your rear wheel are going to turn nice and smooth but then your front one is going to go foom. it's going to be like jerky it's going to be it, it won't be straight it won't seem to be straight and that's very noticeable the fastest you go
You've made one with flathead, uh, flat blade screwdriver, yeah. And cut a slot in the end of it. Yes, that actually works good. But these basically come with uh, a lot of Traxxas tools. Um, but I'm not sure if I've seen them other uh, anywhere else. But yes, you can take a blade, um, take the sharpness away from the blade, and then just do a little slot onto it. These are awesome. They're very good and very easy to work with. So now we're going to install the dry shaft onto here. So they're actually asking me to... Oh, sorry. Moved the wrong page. And you guys. So they're actually... It's the mail end that actually goes onto the truck. So let's do that. Both of them are exactly the same, so we're just going to put the female over there. Here's the two males. And this side or the other side has the same size of holes, doesn't matter. Uh, so, make sure I have the right, right one. This one I could put some uh, Loctite, and I will. Because i got to make sure that the Loctite is on there. Somewhere I have Loctite, blue Loctite. Don't put red Loctite. You can, but if ever you want to take it apart, you're going to have a hard time. Oh, actually, sorry. I'm going to take the Loctite away from there because these are plastic dry shaft. I don't need them. I don't want it to hurt my dry shaft. Yeah, I'm actually, the thread actually goes onto the plastic. Uh, these are not metal, so you do not need Loctite on these. I did a faux pas. So, let's uh, screw that in there. And we'll keep screwing that down until we get to the other side, until we get to China. Get my other little set screw. Uh, Nitro Freak, how are you doing, Nitro Freak? I'm good. I decided to go live and finish off my uh, CC01, and uh, Brad is not with me today. Um, I did message him a few hours ago, telling him, hey, I want to go live in a few hours. I was like... Uh, before 12 and uh, can you come with me or do you want to come out with me and he never replied so uh, that said I'm all by my lumpson there we go both of them are done now let's go check what the next step is So attaching arm pivots. So these are for the lower arms. So I have to find C5 and F8 and C6. Uh, da, 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 da. This looks like F8. Yep. Again, I'm using my flush cutters. I guess I wasn't too much onto it. There we go. Nice, it's nice. Now it's nice and flush. And I need C, C5, and C6. These are the C. Oh, five and six. So these are five. We'll put them on this side. And six, we'll put on this side. Get the other tree. And again, 
five, I'll put it on this side, and six on that side. And now let's go back to the camera. So they do want me to put this gadget here. I guess that's where the motor is. Yeah, the motor is over here. Battery trigger goes there. It's going to lean on this piece here. And uh, I need to find some 12 millimeters, 12 millimeters. So they're all 12 millimeter. I need 10 of them. And I should directly have 10 of them left. Let's go see. Should have 10. There's 10 of them. Hey, I got one little screw left. Has to go somewhere. Okay. So that's there. This actually has a lip, and the lip, if I look at the drawing, it has a, uh, a lip all the way around here, and on the drawing it shows that lip actually goes up. So here it's nice and smooth, but lip actually goes up. And this is what's going to catch the bottom of the battery. So let's attach this onto there. I'm very pleased with how they've, I, I know at the beginning I was kind of saying I wish they would have did some metal uh, chassis rails, but the way that they've built this and the way they have this attaching to this and also to the back, it makes it for really strong. So you do not need uh, to have uh, a metal chassis rail. But what's nice with this is because it does have two chassis rails from the front to the rear, uh, it is considered as a class one truck or a class two truck. So that's kind of interesting and neat. This plastic is so nice to work with and it's so easy to screw into. I'm, I'm pleased and they do give you washers when you go here on the uh, on the metal they do have some lock washers now I'll put that over there and the five goes on this side and it goes into here This is very kind of neat, but this actually goes there, and I guess one link is going to go on this side, and the other link is going to go on this side. So it does have two different positions to screw something on each side. Why they went with 12 millimeter screws here, I don't know, but they're friggin' long. Maybe I should make a, the sound of a drill. This is where, uh, when you do a live video, you gotta watch me screw it all in. But when I actually do editing for the video, or pre-record this, I usually skip after, okay, it's done, it's screwed, then I show that I'm starting to screw, and then I show that it's done. So it makes for very shorter videos. But to tell you the truth, on this CCO2, there is a lot of different parts. It's just crazy. And here on this, uh, you can adjust the wheelbase for shorter wheelbase with the links and all that, by, and even by keeping the same links. Because uh, if you notice here, there is three holes, and here there's one hole left. So for the, this truck, for this wheelbase, they actually want you to set it up as far out as you can. So 
this one is going to be using these two and these two. So you can actually bring it in to actually change wheelbase and actually use the body of the CCO1 on this. So um, they've taught they've thought of it and pretty good. Now oh, that's something very interesting though. You can... Okay, they do have a B here for bottom. So, I was I was wondering because I can actually put this backward. Oh, and I did on this one. The B is on this, is actually... C5. Because if I put this here, it's actually lower. Note the direction. But it doesn't tell me which direction to actually put the pivot. There is a B, and I'm thinking that's for the bottom. It's not because it will not fit onto the chassis because one is, one is actually higher than the other. So this bump here is actually higher than this bump. And I just noticed that you cannot put it on here. So the B has to go on top. which basically there's an angle, one angle that's a little bit more than this one and on the drawing it does show that it goes that way. So I did do it right, both of them. Sometimes it's confusing with those little parts. And you can screw it up pretty easily. So what's everybody up to today on this uh, Friday afternoon? It's 2.35 p.m. here on Friday afternoon. And I decided to go live for a few hours to actually uh, catch up on some, on some of this build. So we'll probably stop just before I start building the axle maybe? I don't know. We'll see. This is going to be a fun little truck to play with. The only thing is, like from here to here, there is a bump that actually goes down. So uh, you'll see once I finish it, the, when you're sliding on stuff, it doesn't slide as good. You do have to worry about it a little bit. But I'm thinking I might build something to help it. And it's as simple as um, taking a piece of metal and just make it from one front link to the rear link and maybe on a little angle just to make little sliders to actually help it slide from one side to the other. So it should be pretty easy to make and it's gonna stop so when you're going on something is it's it's 
ducts actually slide here and then, and then your branch actually goes in, in between here. So, and then you get stuck. But if I build something to slide, I don't know, I'm just trying to think ahead. Trying to make it perform better. Um, just my experience of crawling of what I've seen in the past, but I am going to lock the front and rear diff on the on this. Not sure yet on the type of paint I'm going to use. Not sure. There's a lot of little tiny parts to put on this thing. It's crazy how many tiny parts they put on this. came here and she talked to me about what's for supper and things like that and she told me you should go upstairs to build that you're way more comfortable upstairs it's cooler but the problem is all my setup is here uh, all my tools are down here my camera my computer so it kind of makes makes it hard for me to actually go down there and do it so I know that it's going to be a quiet day today especially on the stream Debating on opening this up and letting people join in, I should be able to take the audio from the PC and route it back in here. But last time I did that, I had a little bit of an echo. But we'll see. We'll see how it's going to work. So real quick, if I take my ruler, just to show you guys, because this, you can see where the, the link is actually going to be on here, and everything is going to slide, but then things are going to catch right here, and also right here. But if I actually build something here, to go from this link to this link, like just even a piece of metal, that goes up to on the side here right in between the, the links I should be good so like right here it fits perfectly and I can build something and help it slide I don't have to make a cup a complete cover I could make a complete cover here and it won't that's another option make a complete cover and make it turn here to actually catch these two could do that but hey we'll build it first once it's built we'll worry about it we'll run it as is to see how it actually performs on the road or on the dirt and see from there so what's the next step next step is starting to build a differential uh, I am gonna not gonna use these I'm not gonna use a cross and uh, I am going to use all the rest of the gears though. So well, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to lock the differ uh, lock the differential. So the only piece I am going to need is do these C7 and this this. That's it. And these parts. So now we got to find them. Yay. That's a lot of stuff in there. Because there's there's still a lot of stuff. There's still a lot of stuff I haven't unpacked. Uh, these are the shocks. Uh, there's a couple other bags also. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here. This bag is nice and heavy. This is the sea bag. Sometimes when you tear it apart, it actually 
you can lose some parts so I like using scissors uh, that's just how I am the scissors are here so why not these are the diff parts which I am gonna need These are the axle shafts, which we'll need later. More screws. More screws, probably need those later. And probably need those later also. So I'm going to put these away, or on the side right now. Here's my big diff, that everything fits in there. Here's my uh, bushings. I am not going to use those, but these are the for the dry shaft, which I'll use later. I do have bearings for this. And I have these, so I might as well clean this up right now. And take those off. So I don't have to worry about it later when I build the links. And uh, I'm not sure where the links are. I haven't seen them yet. Where the rods are. But I'm sure they're somewhere. Okay. Here's my covers for the other side, and here's my two diffs. They are in metal, and they seem to be cast pretty good. I don't see any defect on them, which is good. I'm going to need one of those, I mean four of those. This is for the output shaft. I'm not going to need those. So all these are going to go in a bag somewhere. And for future reuse or whatever. So I need one of those. Where's my other one? There's only one of them. Oh no, there should be more than one. One, two, three. Four. And now I need to find my plastic lockers. So they can actually give you these. These are actually to replace the cross. And these actually permit you to actually lock it. Uh, yes, you can actually just take one of those uh, gears and turn it upside down into there and it actually locks it or put putty or there's a bunch of different ways you can do it but they actually give you the option here in this kit to actually uh, lock it or not lock it uh, I did not lock my CCO1 in the front but after seeing um, Jason at the local track drive his CCO1 everywhere uh, and with no problem and I basically had a little bit of problem when I went there I decided to lock mine now. So it's going to be locked. So basically, I do have to put a little bit of grease uh, on each side of the washer. So I'm just going to put a little bit of grease here on this side, inside. And uh, drop this guy in there. And this guy goes on top of it. Oh, I guess I gotta put a little bit of grease there too. A little bit of Tamaya grease. There we go. More Tamaya grease. Push that in there. More to my grease. Oh, Brad would be so proud of me. I'm putting grease everywhere. I'm making a mess. That's there. Just wondering if there's a particular way to put these. I don't think so.
So you do have to use a cross and put the cross in there. And this actually locks everything in there. So drop that in there. Now I can take my other one that I've greased up, drop it that there, and then put the cover on. And there we go, we have a lock diff. Now I have to find my little screws. It's nice and heavy once everything is in there. Just going to turn my page so I can see better. I do have it for the computer for you guys. So I need six of these little tiny screws. Two, three, four. Oh, oh, oh. Count Dracula. Five. And six. And seven. Why they got seven? Why do they have an extra one? Just, just in case. It's a just in case thing, and I need a little tiny screwdriver for that. We'll use this guy, my little tweaker, and uh, we'll start putting these together. These are going to be in the axle. I could put uh, Loctite on these, but I won't bother. If it does come loose, it comes loose, but it comes loose inside the diff, and uh, it won't go nowhere. Everything is sealed up in there. Everything is tight. These go together very nice. Ah, nice, nice, nice weight to these. So uh, let's build another one. One diff done. A fun adventure never ends. How are you? Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to thumbs up. And if you want a shout out, just type shout out all in one word and it will put a link in the chat for your YouTube channel. Because I got Nightbot working. Works hard every day. One diff. Actually, I could drop it. Uh, drop it in there. There we go. Put the locker in there. Put my cross in there. Put the other locker. And I gotta grease up the other one. I have no idea why I'm greasing them because theoretically they're not even turning. So everything is tight and locked up. There's no way it can turn. But if I do need to open it up, it's gonna be nice and greased and it'll be ready for me to take it off when it's time. You're just for the fun of it. I don't need to. I was going to put the this pin exactly the same angle as the other one. Ryan. <laughs> Not a problem, Ryan. I'll try to remember the name. One sixty fourth die cast, cool. Are you still doing RCs or just doing the die cast ones? Like the Hot Wheels or whatever, you're collecting those? I know a lot of guys are starting to collect those. I have a whole bunch my son wants to get rid of. He showed me like he's got a trunk and it's full of them that I've got him when he was younger and from cousins and things like that and and there, just keep them for now. It it doesn't hurt. Just put them aside and 
keep them in the box locked away somewhere we still got a whole bunch of Legos to get rid of there both this are done hey RC recreation Oh, it's going pretty good. Uh, attached the transmission, uh, lower link mounts are there, uh, rear battery tray kind of thing is there, so it's coming along pretty good. Um, now I actually did the, the two diffs. Um, now I'm gonna do some other little stuff and let's go there right now to the manual to find out what's going on. So. We go directly to the dry shaft and put some uh, C clips. And bearings. Water break. Soda stream water break. Any of you guys uh, have soda stream at home? Water with oxygen. Still RC. Hot wheels, yeah. Keeps your mind happy. That's true. Uh, all the ones from my childhood, they're gone a long time ago, but the wheels were so crooked, but I used to have fun is taking them apart, taking the wheel apart because you just have to push the pin forward a little bit, the shaft, and take it. And then I was always trying to straight, straighten up the, that shaft because after a while by pushing too far on it when you're a kid, you bent those dry shafts and they weren't rolling good. So um, my fun was trying to straighten up that dry shaft to actually make it go better. Yes, it is nice to see CO2. I'm very pleased with it so far, especially how strong it's going to be and how much weight is actually on here. Like the center of gravity on here should be very cool because you do have a lot of weight here. All this plastic way down low is, is kind of cool and awesome because this is this weighs quite a bit. These diff uh, are heavy, but like I was mentioning, the way they got this pumpkin coming down here, uh, it it will catch uh, on trees or limbs or whatever but I, I am gonna make kind of a skid plate on here to actually uh, make it better so um, I'll go to my next door neighbor he's got a machine shop and uh, see what we can come up with but yeah I am pleased with it, it it's turning out to be pretty good Now, we need some dry shafts. Oh, there's the link I was looking for earlier. I should have set my phone up in the corner, up in the corner here, filming what I'm doing and let it go live on, um, on TikTok. For the TikTok people. I do have a TikTok account, so I'm everywhere these days. That's a link here. Uh, oh yeah, these are kind of cool because they they have a pin here that goes all the way through, but these actually lock. So when when you're there together, this actually locks the rear and rear axle together, so everything is nice and straight all the time. So this is very interesting the way they do this. Uh, Tamaya is this becomes one straight axle and uh, this one is the same thing so one is for the rear one is for the front so right now they want me to do one, the one with the ball ends so we'll do the one with the ball ends so first thing first is to actually put uh, a c-clip on here and where is my plier my plier one thing I've done with this pair of pliers is I do have what's called a magnetizer. I did magnetize the tip of it. The reason I do this is, or it used to be magnetized. Hey, it's not anymore. Just got to do it again. My channel is boring. Sorry, Paul.
and not talk about it all day. Sorry. Um, my channel is about having fun and is about teaching other people how to do this because not everybody knows how to do it. So I sometimes try to teach people tricks and tip um, of how to actually do these things. So uh, sorry if it's not an action channel. Um, I do try to put some actions on there sometime, but I I mix it up. So sorry if my channel is boring on you. So let's keep going. That's why sometimes I do RC talk. It's a lot of fun when everybody gets together and chit chat. Um, but I know it's not for everybody, but it's good. There, one done. Uh, my wife and I almost done our Super Cloud Buster build part four. Cool. Yeah, uh, I'll go check RC Recreation uh, uh, to see if those built. I did not see them um, or go by or anything, but I, I will go check your channel out again and go see some. Uh, I did enjoy building mine. It was interesting and fun. Uh, I did build it offline, uh, not videotaping, because I wanted to enjoy that one. So I just wanted to enjoy the build and not uh, having to stop and chit-chat with people all the time. Cannot wait to reveal it. Cool. LOL. Good thing there's a other plenty of other channel on YouTube. Yes, and that's why I like YouTube because it's it's versatile and you can actually uh, go see other channels uh, and enjoy other channels. So, but uh, I'm sorry that Paul. Uh, Schreier uh, is not happy. He says my channel is boring. Um, I try and uh, try to do better, but it's hard to please everybody. Some people like um, tuning into channel and listening to everybody talk and uh, chit chat, but I know it's not for everybody. So they want me to put a little bit of grease at the end and and then put a bearing in there. Now, usually they want you to use these guys, a plastic one, and that's why they want you to put grease on here. Uh, I did put some grease on the shaft already, but because these are bearings uh, and they do turn, you don't really need to put bearing there because you don't want it to your bearing to actually uh, slide there, but it could. So I did put some grease there, just like they mentioned. But because it's actually a bearing, Theoretically, you don't have to. You all are monotonous. Oh, sorry. I'll try to be more cheerful. Ha ha ha. Okay, next one. And Paul, don't worry. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on your way in or out. I really appreciate your support. And I appreciate you stopping by to actually watch the video. And typing your comments. Uh, I really enjoy hearing from all of you. Uh, because this is how I change a channel. This is how I evolve. This is how I take criticism or comments from you guys. And actually try to make it better for the future. So thank you lots for doing this. Well, I do do some enjoy some stuff enjoyable with the RC. Once I finish building it, I go outside and have fun with it with my son. Uh, we take walks all the time, uh, me and my son and my wife and the dog. Uh, we just go take a walk and we bring the RCs with us and we have a whole bunch of fun. Uh, see you later, Paul. Come back whenever you're bored and want to chit-chat with us. I'm open. I like everybody. 
Okay, so that one is done. Let's go check what the other one is. So I have to do the front axle. So I got the bearings on there, and now we're going to do the front axle. Now I got to find the bag with the front axles. Uh, B B2 and uh, B1. And here's the B bag. Maybe we should have explosions when we're actually building this. Or hard rock music. Maybe that's what people need. They need some rock and roll music or an upbeat for building. Okay. <laughs> Paul, you're so funny. Funny but sad in the same time. Okay. Hey Brian, Taff, how are you doing? Uh, Nitro Freak still in here. Marcel off axis. FPV is in here watching us also. Thanks for stopping by and for your support. Really appreciate it. So I have that one that's there. Definitely not hate, just perspective. Yeah, everybody has their own perspective and everybody has their own points to make and things to do so thank you for your comment like I said earlier so now I have to drop some little tiny screws in here so when I look at the manual school 101 so listen to me guys um, this is the instruction if you don't follow the instruction you're gonna screw up uh, so basically I have to take the, the the shaft and put the diffs in there. Once I've done that, I'll put the input shaft together. And then these are the little tiny screws that you put here. So these are the design that they've made that I kind of enjoy and like in the sense that it's kind of neat because it really makes things stronger, I think. Just trying to read all the chat and try to be positive on everything that's going on. So now I have to, if I follow this diagram and the way the diagram was done, this is how they got it laid out. And they show that this shaft actually goes in this one. And then the other one goes on the other side and everything gets locked up together. So nice and strong. And this is nice and heavy. Now this falls in place with, with all of the bearings, there's a spot for the bearings to actually lay. So you just push them at the right spot and everything should fall in place. That one's there, that one's there, and that one's there. There we go. So now everything ro rolls nice and smoothly. These are going to be nice dry shaft. They're nice and nice and heavy, uh, so it's really nice to see. It's it's not light like a toy a toy grade one. So I'm looking for my right screws for this. There's a lot of different bags. Just found my input shafts, so I'll open up this bag. I can find my. Why do tools always run away on you? Like every time you're looking for a tool, oh, it's not there, it's somewhere else. And we'll put those there. Am I gonna need some of the bolts in here? Probably wanna do the front dry shaft. 
right now I'm going to need two of those nuts because I have to drop those nuts in here and worry about the direction that they're in. So you guys can't see that, but the way you have to drop this screw here, and I'll show you in the manual, uh, they want you to make sure that the tip of the screw, or the nut, is pointing up. So, and not, because I actually dropped it in there, and it stayed in there, but it was actually flat. So, I just pushed it up. So I'm actually doing this step, and not didn't do this step yet. But I'll go back to it right now. So, go back to that. Uh, Matthias RC, how are you doing? I decided to keep going this build. I did call Brad, uh, but he did not reply. So I decided like a big guy or a grown up to actually do it by myself. So I need a very tiny bearing. Very tiny bearing here and another one of these guys. For the output shaft and I need a C-clip with a shaft. Now I have to put this little C-clip onto here and make sure it doesn't fly off. And like I was saying earlier, I gotta remagnetize my pliers because I like it when it's actually magnetized because the C-clip actually stays on there. So that's in there. I need a little bit of grease because they want me to put grease, but I am putting bearings. Put one bearing here. And my other one goes in here. And that little tiny bearing goes in the tip, but I have to put a little bit of grease there. Gonna have to go see Paul's channel later to actually see what what he does and what he's all about. There we go. Isn't that pretty? This is very smooth. Uh, no, the bearing the bearings do not come with the kit. So I did buy a separate uh, bearing kit for this. At the local hobby store. Uh, here they are. All the way here. They give you plastic bushings. And I, for some odd reason, I keep keep these friggin' plastic bushings. I have bags full of them. But these ones, uh, I'm just going to throw out. Because uh, I kept them for, I'll use them later for something else. But that never happens. So now I'm actually going to throw them out. They are plastic. I could recycle them. Okay. So that's done. And now I can put the cover on it. These are very nice um, and small axles. Uh, gearing on this, I'm not sure what the gearing is on here. But I should find out what it actually is. We can close it all off. I just want to make sure I'm putting the screws all in the right spot. And yes, everything goes on here. So, one thing I like doing sometimes is you actually grab the drawing. If you're not sure how, how long or how big the screws are, that's what Tamaya is great for uh, dealing with, is that they put the drawing for the... Um, the screw here on the side and if you actually take your screw and put it right on top of it it actually matches the exact size of it of that screw so this is how you can tell is if you have the right uh, screw for it or the right size so that's why I like uh, the printout because 
it works way better. So I need four of the little tiny ones, and these are the ones here. So I'll just put that here, and just put the screw on top of it. And yes, that's pretty much the same. So I need four of those little tiny ones. One, two, three, four. Uh, two of the three by twelve, and those are with the coarse um, threads. Oh, that's a much longer one. I need a shorter one. That's uh, probably this one. Yep. See, the other one were probably fourteen millimeters because they were just a little bit bigger. So we'll put those there for now. So I have one of those, two of those, uh, one of those, two of those, one of those. Uh, that's done. That's done. Okay. Now I have to screw it all together. <laughs> okay, class. <laughs> yes, sir. Listen, listen to the teacher. Don't listen to the guy in the back disturbing the class. Um, just never mind him. Uh, he's just here to be a troublemaker. Uh, and he's here because um, he has no friends. That, that. Two screws in front. Well, let let him be here because it is it is watch time and it is um, time that goes for me. So him being here watching it actually helps my channel. Uh, but like you guys said, um, just just let him be. Uh, let him trash me. Uh, I'm 55 years old. I've heard worse uh, from people. I've seen worse for some people, and. I have no time to argue with people that say things like that. Hey, this does not work. This is not the right screw. M212. Oh, I was putting it in the wrong place. Duh. I'll be okay. Don't worry, class. I'll be okay. Tomorrow's substitute teacher will be Brad. We'll have Brad showing you a thing or two. Especially how to install a mortar on a grasshopper. And get mad doing it because that's what he did last time on my live feed. See you later, Paul. God bless you too. We all need different people in the world. If someone loves antique RCs, <laughs> a Tamaya is not an antique. They still sell these kits and they're still very good. And they still go pretty good. But hey, that's why there's so many distributors out there. That's why they sell Ford. That's why they sell uh, Dodge, Honda. Um, because everybody has different tastes. So it takes different people to make the world go round. I have grease all over my hands. And I should... And now I'm getting grease all over my screwdriver, and it's slipping all over the place. Well, I don't think he does live stream. Uh, he did mention that uh, he finds people talking all the time boring. Which... We get into pretty deep arguments sometime when we talk uh, on my shows at night. Um, it's pretty rare I'd go on during the day. But when we get on during the day, um, we uh, 
we get different people in here. So there we go. I'm trying to, oh yeah, there's the, the thread I was looking for where I put that um, that nut to make sure everything was fine. So let's go back to the manual real quick. Okay, class, we are back at the manual. If you follow what I'm doing, uh, you see here when I was showing that it had to be done, um, it had to be like this. So I didn't make sure it was like that. And now we're going to go to the next step, which is 21. We're doing pretty good. Um, go back to this camera. I'll do a soda stream break again and uh, take a drink. Maybe I should spike it with something and uh, so I can be tipsy. Um, so let's find the parts that I need. Uh, I need C15 and C15. So in this C part tree, I've been getting a lot of parts on this C part tree. So 15 and 16. Do, 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 do. Let's go to the overhead cam. So 15, 16s are these guys. A little bit different. And those but again I'll put 15 on that side just because I had it there earlier so I put the small number on this side and the bigger number on this side like that I won't mix up my parts 15 and 16 are there and that's to actually attach the links onto onto there so I hold this the same way I had it and 15 goes on that side and it goes, uh, the, the angle goes that way. That goes there. Let's attach the links. That's interesting that it's actually on an angle. Um, it is not straight. You probably see it better. If I hold something to it. And you can see there, this is in the channel and how much of an angle this is at. So it's not straight, it's actually on an angle. Which is interesting and, and uh, good the way it's actually built because it goes towards the outside of your car. So to me it makes sense. Uh, 3 times 15 and now I need the 15 and I need 8 of them. I'm just putting it on my drawing to make sure I have the right screw. And that's the one I need. I need eight of the eight of these. That's a lot of them. And yes, I could use a drill, but hey, I like talking, and I like talking to you guys. And I like when you talk back. It gives me something to talk about. Okay, so I got all eight screws. Let's see, got four people watching right now. Uh, we went up all the way up to eight people at the same time. That's kind of cool. For a Friday afternoon when people are supposed to be at work, that's cool. Okay. So, let's put that little guy in there. Oh, my chat disappeared. Sorry guys, let me get the chat back in there. We love hearing you talk. <laughs> At least somebody does. Maybe I should have a little video playing in the background in a small corner here. Or have this video in a small corner and have me bashing just to please everybody. Not.
how come I chose this kit? Because I did not have this kit. Um, originally, this kit came out two years ago, uh, CCO2, and I actually got it so I could be one of the first one to actually build this kit and put it up on YouTube. Uh, but then I noticed by the time it came in and by the time everything happens, uh, a lot of people already made videos. So I just lost, didn't lose interest, but I just lost, uh, I just didn't feel like doing it anymore. And I said to myself, I don't have a CCO1 and this is a CCO2. Uh, so I said to myself, I'm going to buy a CCO1 and I want to build the CCO1 before building this one. So it took me a while to get the CCO1. Once I got it, I built it and now I'm building the CCO2. So that's a very long story. Sorry if it was winded and very long. But that's the story and I'm sticking to it. But man, there's a lot of friggin' little parts on this kit. And there we go. Let's go back to the manual. What does the manual say now? Uh, top cam. Oh, no. What? Manual. Here we go. So I've done this on this one, and now i got to flip it around and put 17 and 18, which is on the other side. Oh, and then I gotta put these guys. Okay, let's go to the top cam. Uh, get these again. Uh, these are on an angle. It's kind of interesting the way they got it. And we'll cut out 17 first of all, and we'll put it on the left side again. It's just once you cut it off the tree, uh, you don't know what number is what. So if I put these two together, uh, yes they are different angle, they are different things, so it's kind of tough to remember which one was which. But by putting them on this is 17, this is 18, it really helps you guys uh, or helps me uh, trying to remember what it was. So earlier I had it on this side, I put these two links uh, on here, so now I'm going to put the other ones on there. And I believe those are going to be the upper or the lower. doesn't matter. But now I have to put again the angle. 17 goes on that side. And again, it's interesting how they've, they've made it turn. Uh, usually on other trucks, they have it forward. And they rely on the ball to actually bring everything crooked. But... This, they've actually made the link holder crooked, which is, to, to me, brilliant. It's, it's a very good idea. Uh, it's just, like I said when I started this build, uh, I think this thing is over-engineered. Where's Brad? I invited Brad two hours ago, and he never replied to me. So my phone started beeping a while back. I checked. It was not him, but I was tired of hearing it beep, so I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. So if he does uh, call uh, or send me an email, uh, I won't see it until the stream is done because I'm not checking my email while I'm actually streaming live. But hopefully he will show up in the chat, and if he does, he can chat with us. And next time, reply to my email. But I... I it was a surprise thing. I, I had this on my desk and um, I glued a few things. Uh, I kept going and I just, you know, when you're starting a build, you just want to finish it. It just itches you and I didn't want to wait a week to actually build this. Uh, so I decided to go live uh, and actually continue the build. Uh, I should have mentioned to that to Brad uh, Thursday night, yeah, last night, uh, that I was thinking of doing this. But he's always sending me emails. Check this video out. Check this video out. So, there we go. That's done. Now I have to put those two little ball ends, which are 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 they in here? Yes, they are. So now I have to open up this package.
and I decided today to actually use OBS to actually uh, stream. So it permits me to show you uh, the manual uh, with a little picture of me. Hello, guys. Uh, and actually go back to my front camera. So it permits me to be a little bit more flexible with you guys and look a little bit more professional, even though I'm not and I'm not shaped. Um, my wife is always after me. Go shave, go shave, go shave. So now we have to put those little ball ends, which go into that little screw that I put earlier. So there's one, there's my other one, there's another one. Hopefully I should have some other ones for the front, or that's just for that. No, that should be for the front. Should be where they're actually the shock actually attach. So this you can actually use the little cross that you guys have, and they show that in the manual. Uh, you got you have a T cross, so you can actually use this to actually put it on. But I have this thing that I got from Driftwell Maniac from AKA. This thing is kind of cool because it does have a seven millimeter, but if you push it and lock it. You now have the 5.5 and I believe this is 5.5 yes it is so now I can actually take this instead and screw it onto here and not having to worry about this little thing so because I'm screwing here onto metal I am going to take my Loctite out and put a little bit of Loctite just a little bit Just a little dab. I want to make sure it doesn't uh, go onto my plastic. Can put the other one in there. Just want to check something on the other side real quick. Axle almost done. Go back to the manual. Uh, what's nice with this is actually tells you uh, are you going to borax with body? Box art. Uh, not sure yet. I probably won't. Uh, I'm thinking of trying a splatter uh, splatter profile because I do want to do like a paintball themed truck kind of so I am going to experiment on a way I'm going to do very small splatter uh, just like as if it was thrown with a whole bunch of paintballs uh, or a truck that was actually in a paintball field and people were just throwing paintball all over it so it's, I wanted to do that experiment for so many years now, and uh, I have a kind of a way I want to try to do it. I want to, I don't want to talk to it too much about how I'm going to try it, but uh, it should be interesting. So I am going to do something different. I am not going to go box art with it because this truck, I do want to. Uh, sorry, 
I do want to use this truck on the trails. So it won't do like the, my silver one, my uh, black chrome one, because that one has a very nice body and it came all painted uh, black chrome. So the CCO one, I am looking for a different body for it, for CCO one that would actually fit the same thing. So I have a body to put on the shelf and I have another body to actually take it outside on the trails. Uh, so uh, I'll probably look for a body for that, a uh, hard body or something. Uh, but this one, I am going to put something different on it. So I am not going to go box art. So let's go back to that manual. Uh, that's done. So now I have to put the link together. That's the steering link. Oh, that's that goes to the servo. And then this one is at the front. I do have other ones. Maybe I can use a different one to actually make this link instead instead of using what they've sent me because it looks so much nicer when there's uh, a metal link up there so now I have to find some C9 uh, find the caps which I have uh, there I've got a lot of little parts to find here but they're all in the C tree which is good and I got a lot of screws to find look at all the stuff I gotta find just to do this one step. Cool, yo. Okay, let's get back to the top cam. And get my C part tree. It's getting empty. It's getting empty. So I need two of these. Two of these bars, and there are nine. There's a whole bunch of them. One, two. And I need C13, which I believe is this guy. C13. I need some C19. Those are the casters. Here's a C13. That's 19. Eh, what did I say 13 when it's 19? I don't know. And it's not getting late. And I have not been drinking. C19 once. C19 twice. Sure everything is nice and clean. Sorry, I gotta do that in front of the camera. And I do have a big bearing that goes in there. It goes in there. Let me get the cup, it's easier. It's easier when I put the cup in there. My screw almost ran away on me. So when you insert these um, bearing into the cup, it's always easier to put it into here and then just pull it through because you're just keeping everything straight. And then we'll put another one on this side. Oh, that's a bigger bearing that actually goes there. Sorry. It didn't want to go in there. It didn't want to push. There we go. They're pretty. So I'll do the other one real quick. Those two are done. Put this guy away because I don't need it. Okay, that, that. Now I gotta make the link 
which I had the pin earlier. It's over here. And I have this. And I have that. Now these, sometimes they're hard to hold into your hand while you're spinning. I like to use what's called a shock plier. This is a shock plier. They come in different uh, different style. Uh, this is one of them. I'm trying to find my other one. And this is another style of shock plier. plier. Uh, what's interesting with these is that you can actually hold these a heck of a lot better and easier and you won't wreck them. So you actually hold these and then you can actually screw these uh, clockwise to get it started. And then you turn this one around and you put the other one. It just makes it easier to hold everything. And later when we'll do the shock it's going to be the same thing. Now I have to put this at a certain distance but what's nice with the um, Tamiya manual is that they are printed to scale. What that means is that uh, you put your drawing down and you can actually overlay your drawing, your link onto it. You overlay your link onto it and this is exactly 38.5 millimeter. So when you screw it, you lay this on there and you can see I can still screw that in. And I went a few twists too much. One more. That's pretty dead on. So now I can put my little cups in there. They do have special tools for that, and I am planning on getting one. i got to call Brian Taft to actually get these. Uh, it actually helps you put the ball. It inserts a ball and takes them off. Uh, it almost looks like this also, and but it's got a little pin in here. that It actually helps you push the ball in there. So uh, that's the next tool I need to grab, and I need to call a Brian Taft or go on his website and actually order one. And these balls also, uh, these plastic ball that goes in there, they do end up being used. Uh, I like using the metal ones. Uh, I think, think Team Associated sells some, but um, I don't have any. Okay, so I've done that. I've done that. Uh, that's done. Now I have to install it onto the on there. Oh, I still need B5. I need to find B5 in these screws here. B5. Bingo! Uh, that's F. This is B. This looks like it. B5. Man, that's a big friggin' piece of metal plastic. What happens with the plastic sometimes is that um, they do end up being flimsy and bend. So when you're steering and you're trying to pull one wheel to the other, that's why it's always better sometimes to have these in metal and not plastic. But let's see if I do have some here, because I did order some from GCM Racing a little while back. The problem is, I store them places, and then I don't remember where they went. Please bear with me a few seconds or a few minutes. If I don't find it, I'm just going to put that on there and worry about it later. So I cannot find the links that I previously purchased. So that said, let's find the rest of the screws that I need. So I need four of these. I need one long one. So 
So to make sure I have the right screw, again, I'm putting it on top of it. Yes, I do. Earlier, we had a, somebody in here saying that he hates it when people talk. But to me, the hardest thing about doing a stream like this, especially a live one, is to keep talking all the time and not have dead air. So I got I got all the parts of there. Okay. So now that I have all the parts, I can put everything together. So this link goes on to this one. Uh, the farthest hole in. And then the big one, the long one, goes on the outside. So that one goes on the inside. Then the casters goes there. And they do want me to grease there. Grease there. They had bushings for here, but I put bearings in, instead. Okay. So let's put this puppy together. Go back to the top cam. How long have I been streaming? I am not sure how long has my stream been so far. Well, I started was 2 o'clock, 2.43. Yeah, we'll keep going for another 15 minutes. We'll stop at 4. So I can have this. So both of these are exactly the same. So this one, I'll hold it like the drawing actually shows. And I'll have to put a small screw onto here. And I believe that's the longest one I have to put. Yes, it's the long one. And I have to put this guy behind it. And this goes through it. And then I have to screw that onto this. p.m. Eastern yes I started at 2 p.m. Eastern that's correct so if I keep going till 4 that's gonna make it a two-hour stream I might go on later this afternoon to keep going hi there is the Tamaya King uh, Tamaya King is not here Brad is not here oh man look what I'm doing Look, like, this is stupid. This goes on top there. Oh, yeah, I'm reading the chat, reading this stuff, and not worrying about what I'm doing. Let's see how I see. Here, here is the Tamaya King. RC Recreation. Oh, Brad Kalman, he is there. Waiting for my friend to drop another line so I can get in. There is Brad. There is the Tamaya King. That is correct. Well, Brad, uh, I'm almost done. Um, I could stop this stream and keep going, or actually try to get you in, in this one um, and keep going. But don't know. But let me finish this first and uh, worry about it in just a few minutes. I did send you an email at one o'clock, at uh, twelve o'clock, or just before twelve. Uh, asking you if you could go live, but I guess you don't have your phone on all the time, like you mentioned yesterday. Uh, I am not on Zoom right now. I am doing this via um, OBS. So if I invite you in, it might be an issue with Acoustic Echo Cancelor uh, uh, feedback when we hear you talk, because it's not set up for it right now. But like I said, um, in about 15 minutes, I could stop the stream and do part three. So uh, at least it's going to be uh, not too long. It's going to be uh, like a two part. Part one, part two, part three. So this one's in there. And now I'm going to use this screw. Yeah, the big ones are for the other one.
running away on me. I will send you an invite, Brad, after this is done. Like I said, I cannot put you on this live stream. We can try, but I think it's going to give us feedback. Because I am doing this with OBS. So let me put the steering, the front steering, finish the dry shaft in the front, and then I can see if I'm going to put you in this stream or into a next one that we can do right after this one. And Sang is the Tamaya King? Okay. You guys can argue and take the title if you want. But I think both of you have fairly enough knowledge on both of them. Uh, nope, I'm screwing this up again. I'm holding my... I uh, was holding this upside down in my hand, which is not good. Let that fall out so it won't be in my way and not as heavy. Last time I was doing this with my son and uh, I was letting him put some screws. Uh, he was having issues is how to hold the piece and hold the screwdriver and hold the uh, piece together and straight and all that. Like he was saying, well, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to, to hold everything together. And yes, it is, but you get used to it or you find little tricks to help you out. There we go. Can put that back in there. Put the other one back in there. Yay, look at that. I got steering. Yeah, uh, Brian Taff, I was mentioning, I got to call you. I, I need, um, it, it looks like a shock plier like this, but it's actually to insert the ball end into uh, into these, into the rods. So it's to insert the rod and insert the ball end and take them off. Uh, so I do have to contact you. That's something I want to buy and I want to buy it from you. So I got to go check out your website to see what you actually have. Okay, let me go uh, to the manual again. So I basically did all this, uh, top part, and now I have to install it here on the bottom. And then we can find out. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Top cam. So we're almost done. Let me put a little bit of grease on the ball end. Everybody loves a good ball that's greased. Lots of grease, lots of grease. And then I can slap this in here. And I can put the top screw in there. getting more knowledgeable yeah it's by listening to you guys but I don't care what came out at what year and things like that um, I don't worry about it I just build it and I have fun with them um, I got too many things to remember than to worry about what year the quad buster came out I'm holding it like the picture to make sure I had this on the right side and it is following the manual so everything is good two more screws and then we can try to get Brad into here or start a new stream four o'clock so I still got time 
still got till six o'clock about till I need to get off and spend time with the family. Six to nine, nine thirty. Uh, Brian Taff has a website uh, to buy actually some stuff. Uh, Brian, I'm going to make you a moderator real quick so you can uh, put a link to your uh, website uh, where you're selling your stuff. RC parts. Uh, he does sell some RCs, uh, but mostly tools and things like that. So if you guys need help or needs parts, uh, he's more than willing and knowledgeable to help you guys and he is in the States. There we go. Nice and smooth. Upper link, lower link are all installed. So these are pointing out. And these are actually pointing in. So, let me get the keyboard here, or actually, let me end this stream and maybe we can start another one right after this one. There's six people watching right now. So I'll end this one with this, that we were at step 22. Uh, we started at ten, step 10, went all the way up to 22, which is pretty good, 10, well, 12 steps. So every two hours we do 10 steps, and I think there's 43 steps or something like that. So, um, guys, uh, stay tuned, and uh, don't go too far, because we're coming back with Brad in part 3 of uh, this build. So, uh, uh, rcpitproduct.com, there you go. So go check out uh, Brian Taft's uh, website. Uh, oh, he's also on eBay, okay. Uh, are the prices the same, or you get a best, better deal on eBay? <laughs> anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, prices are good anyways. So I got to order some stuff. I know I have some U.S. duties to pay or shipping. It's probably going to be more than the local hobby store, but uh, I want to try to help uh, other people also. I'm trying to help uh, as many people as I can. Uh, so why not? Um, so... Guys, meanwhile, go charge up some batteries and go outside and have some fun and break something. Because if you're not breaking anything, you're not having any fun. Talk to you guys later. Cheers.